present here. First of all, I would like to thank uh, UNU WIDA for providing me this opportunity to present my work in this conference. The topic of my presentation is Health Shocks and Intergenerational Transmission of Inequality. This is an empirical study based on the southern state of India named, called Andhra Pradesh. This will be the brief outline of my talk. Income shocks, uh, in, uh, the effect of income shocks on households in developing countries has been analyzed by a wide strand of development economics literature. Now, these shocks can be covariate in nature, affecting all households in a particular community, like droughts and floods, or they can be idiosyncratic in nature, affecting uh, that are specific only to individual households. Now, in my study, I deal with the welfare impact of a particular type of an, uh, in idiosyncratic income shocks called the health shocks. Health shocks are most common idiosyncratic shocks and also the most important reason for this descent of households into poverty in developing countries. Now, why is this so? This is because health shocks entail economic costs to the households. These, shock, these costs can be direct costs in terms of medical expenditure or indirect costs in terms of loss of uh, productive labor time and thereby labor earnings. So, it, households, in order to cope with the burden of these economics, economic costs, households use a variety of formal and informal mechanisms like savings, transfer, transfers, credit, sale of assets, taking extra work, and so on. But whether the households are actually able to cope with the burden of these costs depends upon a variety of factors. These include uh, own resources possessed by the household like human physical, human capital, physical capital, social capital, financial capital, and so on. Thus, we might, one might expect that the poorer households in developing countries might be doubly disadvantaged to cope with the burden of uh, health shocks. This is because they, they uh, neither uh, have access to own resources nor they have access to in, uh, credit, well-developed credit and insurance markets. Now, hence, these households might adopt costly strategies like withdrawing children from school, which in turn have implications for vulnerability to future shocks and intergenerational transmission of inequality and poverty. So in my study, I deal with the effect of parental health shocks on investments in children's human capital. This study will also throw some uh, light on important dimensions like role of timing of the shocks, pathish through which these shocks affect human capital investment, the differential effects of maternal and paternal shocks, and their differential effects on younger and older children, and the importance of school quality. Now, now coming to the theoretical background for this study, the main, the main study, this uh, the theoretical framework is drawn from the Becker and Tom's framework of uh, rise and fall of fam uh, families. So the, in this, according to this Becker and Tom's framework, when financial markets are complete, then you, then the parents, parents' investments in children will not depend on parental income because parents can always borrow against the future earnings of the children. But financial, when financial <coughs> markets are incomplete, then parental investments in children will depend upon the parental income. So when health shocks affect the households, then part of the then the resources are diverted to medical expenditure or the resources available are reduced itself hence the financial resources devoted to schooling might reduce but there might be other channels through which the health shocks can affect children's uh, affect investments in children for example parental involvement in children's education and caregiving might reduce children's time itself might be devoted more to household and market production activities as the opportunity cost of children increases and there might also be psychological effects. So this diagram shows the different pathways through which investments in children can be affected. Now, coming to the empirical evidence, it is not, uh, it is not possible to identify the specific pathways in an empirical framework. So the focus has always been on the cumulative effect on the children's educational attainment. Also, there are different measures of human capital accumulation used in the literature, and these capture uh, input, output, and outcome indicators. The, much of the empirical work is concentrated on in Africa. This is because after the spread of AIDS epidemic, millions of children were orphaned in Africa. So the studies, were, the studies have investigated if there are significant differences in schooling between the orphans and the non-orphans. Now, most of the work have found that mater, uh, paternal sh uh, health shocks, especially maternal deaths, affect uh, children's enrollment in school and also reduce their completed years of schooling. 
but there are actually there are very few studies that have actually uh, actually uh, done the effect of parental health shocks on children's investments in schooling outside the countries where there is no epidemic done and also there are some estimation challenges that has to be uh, taken into account which i'll be detailing later so in my study i use the data from young lives project which aims to study childhood poverty over a period of 15 years through household and child surveys now this study this project has been conducted in four countries and in india it is conducted in the state of andhra pradesh now two two cohorts of uh, age groups of children are being followed one is the younger cohort of 2011 children which were born in 2001 to that is they were they were one year old in 2001 to and then uh, in 2002 and then there were there are a group of 1008 children which were 8 years old in 2002 now three rounds of the survey have been completed and in my analysis i'm using all the three rounds the attrition rate compared to other panel survey is very low at 3.6% now in 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 this study particular study i'm only follow i'm only uh, uh, using the young life children in the day, uh, are included in the analysis the schooling outcome of other children in the household are not are not studied this is mainly for two reasons young life is not a random sample of all the in all the households in a particular community but it is a random sample of households with a 1 year old or a 18 year old in a particular community also important factors like child health and learning ability are more are available only for the young life children coming to a profile of the younger cohort this is a profile of the younger cohort this these uh, these children were 1 year old in 2002 that is in round 1 and they were 8 year old in round 3 So in the round three, in the in when they were eight year old, ninety nine point two percent of the children were enrolled in primary or pre primary education. But you see that the minimum age of this cohort in the particular academic year is six point nine five years. That is around seven years. So which when they are expected to be in grade two. But you find that six point five percent children were not enrolled, or they were still enrolled in pre primary, and twelve percent were attending grade one. So they were lagging behind. so is there a temporary delay in the initiation into primary school for this i use two outcome variables the first variable is a is an indicator variable which takes value 1 if the child in, is enrolled in, is enrolled in grade 2 and above or zero and it takes zero otherwise the second is a continuous variable defined defined as follows so this particular variable takes value 1 if the child is has completed the grade appropriate for the age and if it it takes values more than 1 if it is if the grade uh, completed is higher than that expected of the age and vice versa coming to the old coming this is a profile of the grade age specific grade <coughs> attained by the children by the parental health status now coming to the older cohort uh, the older cohort were 1 year old sorry the older cohort were 8 years old in the round 1 and they were 15 year old in the round 3 In round one, ninety-seven percent of them were enrolled in a primary school in our one. But when they move to the when move to the round three, they only seventy-five percent of them were enrolled in school. So is there a termination of schooling due to parental health shocks? Now for this again, I construct two outcome variables. One is an indicator variable that is, takes value one if the child continues to go to school, and the, and zero otherwise. But dropping out of school might not necessarily mean that. that there is lower educational attainment if the child is able to go back to school after once once the household recovers from shock so i am using another variable in terms of grades advanced that is grade completed in r3 minus grade completed in r1 this is again a profile of the grade advancement by uh, by parental health status now moving to the methodology i use a conditional logic procedure here the mainly for two reasons conditional logic pro procedure only compass only those children from a same, from the same community that is it retains communities where there are both enrolled and drop out children and also it controls for community level factors like access to schools and health centers which might influence the children in a community uh, in the case of continuous variables i use least square regression analysis with community fixed fx the main variable of my interest is self reported parental health shocks these are defined as a serious illness or death of a father or a mother of a young life child between the rounds now the other uh, independent variables may be classified into three categories the child characteristics household characteristics and school characteristics 
The child characteristics include the age, gender, birth order, and number of siblings. In the case of household characteristics, you have initial years of schooling of mother, sorry, includes years of schooling of mother and father, initial wealth quartile groups of the children, whether the household belongs to socially disadvantaged communities. And in the school characteristics, I control for quality of nearest primary schooling. Before I go and estimate my model, I find that the, there, there might be factors that, that might bias the estimates. For example, health, and there might be unobserved time invariant factors. Health shocks are itself not random events. So, because households facing health shocks may dis display certain characteristics, like social status and mobility, that might also determine school attainment. So failure to control for these characteristics will generate biased estimate. Also, there might be unobserved time varying factors. For example, there might be incidents that happen during this period which have affected both the parent and health status as well as the schooling attainment of the children. Examples of this include the local weather shocks like droughts and floods, parent and job loss, child morbidity, etc. So, in the sec the I take into account by unobserved time varying factors by controlling for other any other income shocks faced by the households, and I also take into account changes in <laughs> changes in child's health status and so on. In the, in the case of the first, unobserved, uh, to check for the endogeneity issues, I perform two empirical tests. Firstly, I check whether health shocks are persistent. That is, health shocks are correlated over time using a dynamic panel model. So here I find that the health, lag health shock does not predict the present health shocks, which, which shows that the health shocks are not persistent over time. Because if they are persistent over time, there might be some unobserved characteristics that might be driving my results. No, and also I also check if there is a, if, uh, if the children with low school participation are also more likely to have parents that face health shocks. That is, if lag non-school participants participation predicts the future health shocks of the parents. And I find I also find this is not the case. So proceed to the met, uh, met, uh, to the estimate the model. Here, the main results I find that the parental health shocks if in the uh, in the case of younger cohort reduces the age specific grade uh, enrollment as well as the grade attainment. Now, in many studies they have, which have not controlled for uh, um, quality of primary schooling as well as uh, the, the ability of the child. For example, here I've controlled for the initial learning abilities of the child. You find that the children who have initial, low initial cognitive abilities are also the more, are also the ones who are more likely to drop out. If this is not controlled for, then you uh, this might give an over you are you you are you will give an or the estimates might be upward biased. So I control for these uh, factors as well, which are not done in the literature before. So the main conclusions of my study are higher the years of school. Uh, for, uh, in the case of younger children, I find that th th there is a temporary delay in the en enrol in enrollment in the primary education. While in the case of the older cohort, the schooling attainment is reduced by 0.26 years for, uh, due to parental health shocks. I also find, which I have not shown here, in the early childhood, maternal shocks are more important than the paternal shocks, than paternal shocks which mainly affects the child's human capital development through time devoted to childcare. But in the later stage, when the because for the older children, the opportunity costs are higher than for the younger children. So paternal sh uh, shocks become more important because loss of income drives the children drives the children to be dropped from school and they are sent to work. So and also other income shocks like child child uh, like job loss and parental job loss and child's initial cognitive ability are significant predictors of schooling attainment of children. The other factors are the mother's education and father's education in, in, uh, significantly contribute to the uh, contribute to the schooling attainment of children. In the case of older cohort, I found that the dropout rates are higher among the older children, among female children, and those who have larger number of siblings. Similarly, wealthier households had uh, children belonging to wealthier households are more likely to continue into education, and also migration of the household from a particular community into a different community negatively impacts the child's education. Now, I've also performed various robustness checks to sample selection, that is, I condition on both the parents L1 and R1. This is, to see, this is just to see that uh, the uh, initial, the health shocks that might have occurred before R1 should not be having later on effects, the effects should not be continuing into later. 
and I also condition on no migration from the community. This is because most of the migration that I've observed from in, the, in my data set is distress migration, that is search in, that is searching for a job outside the outside the outside the uh, their community and so on. So they, they might be affected they might be affected by other income shocks as well. So I also condition on no migration. Then I use different indicators of child health in my analysis. For example, I use changes in BMI, changes in height for age, weight for age, Z scores. I also use indicators of uh, report self-reported health shock, like uh, health shocks reported by the parents of the, to the children. For example, if the children face any serious illness or injury during the period, and so on. And I also, in the literature, we, we find that the credit ma access to credit market is a very important is very important factor that affects the investment in children's human capital. So I also use indicators for borrowing constraints faced by the households, like access to formal and informal credit markets, whether they are able to borrow, do they borrow at a very high interest rates, or they borrow from the money lenders, and so on. Coming to the implications of my study, I find that in my earlier study, I found that households that are low on socioeconomic status are also more vulnerable to health shocks. Therefore, the, this, this in turn reduces the future economic well-being of the children through reduced school participation, and therefore it perpetuates the poverty and inequality. Now, the state of Andhra Pradesh has a high enrollment rate of 100.76 uh, in the primary education, but this drops to 79.12 in the upper primary education. So, it, so the, maybe policy interventions to retain children uh, in school can be explored by the state. Also, so also there are studies that have pro, that have proved that conditional cash transfer programs like Progressa have 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 actually retained school uh, children in school, and they are able to mitigate the income shocks income shocks faced by the households. So, thank you.